happy Valentine's month where everything is heart shaped and everybody is incredibly obnoxious and being single is apparently a personal failing and it can't possibly be a choice. Welcome to February. <laughs> so maybe you want a happy movie to be able to escape, right? Well, luckily I'm here to help because I've been on a quest for I'm not even lying, an entire year trying to find out if there has been a good rom-com since hashtag Me Too happened. Now if you forget what Me Too was in 2017, it's kind of where the Harvey Weinstein stuff came out and then more and more people came forward with like all of the horrific treatment they got. So yeah, bleakness, beyond bleakness. But what I'm hoping is we have a phoenix rising from the ashes. They just don't make rom-coms like they used to. This is something that we hear all the time. Where's definitely maybe? Where's when Harry met Sally? Where is 10 things I hate about you? We are starving for these kinds of movies and rom-coms have apparently been having a renaissance, but does that mean that they're fantastic? Again, this is my mission, people. I am here to bring you joy. Now, you may call me an expert, but apparently you can't get officially qualified for that, but I'd say watching this many movies for this video, um, that would kind of count me. <laughs> So we're going to go through them all. I'm going to give you a one or two sentence possibly um, impression of each movie so then you can decide if it's for you or not or I will just tell you it's straight up trash because we want to sort the trash from the treasure because we want to adorn our grotto with some wonderful things. And um, luckily I actually personally do think that there have been good if not great rom-coms since hashtag me too. I have tried to watch every single rom-com that has been released in the English language because I had to set some boundaries, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I've been able to watch every single one. Trust me, I have tried every which way. So there are a few missing and I apologize if one that you love is missing, but like I said, I'm talking about this many. But for your convenience and another reason why you should subscribe and give this video a thumbs up as well, I have gone through and set timestamps for every single movie. So there's a lot of timestamps. That's all the gaps that you're seeing down there. Yeah, welcome. Uh, that's how many movies we're talking about. So in case you're wondering what my thoughts were on a particular movie, your reference point is right there. You are so incredibly welcome. We're going year by year, started with 2018 because Me Too happened in 2017. So I wanted to give them a bit of a gap before they could, you know, sort things out and things weren't quite so misogynistic. 2018. Sierra Burgess is a loser. It's really uncomfortable trying to make us love an objectively terrible person as our protagonist. Especially when manipulation and consent are issues of concern, so trash. You know it's trash too. Crazy Rich Asians. A beautiful capitalist dream. There are awkward issues with Aquafina using black scent though. If you can look past those issues and you want to be swept away into literally, like I said, a capitalist dream, you will love this movie. It's charming, it's so well acted really really like this set it up where two executive assistants work together to get their bosses together fantastic chemistry all around uh, but as an executive assistant myself i can tell you i've got no idea how they got away with half of this stuff because wow fired <laughs> when we first met do you like groundhog day good here's a movie for you it's a common theme we'll find it's really trying to be an old school 2000s kind of rom-com it does hit the marks but it does have genuine nice moments in it and good chemistry there are some bad jokes in it but if you see this actor you're probably going to get some bad jokes as i'll be revealing later to all the boys i loved before i'm counting the entire trilogy here because i love this i want every single coming of age rom-com to aspire to this level. Also, the colours that they use in this, mustard and teal. Shouldn't go, shouldn't. Looks beautiful. Awkward love letters that are written have never produced something quite as amazing as this trilogy. Every single one is fantastic. The only other trilogy that is as good as this was Toy Story. The Kissing Booth. Stop it. Stop trying to make consent an inconvenience. <laughs> Second act. <laughs> JLo. Lab Muffin Beauty, I just want to hear her thoughts on this, to be perfectly honest with you. Jayla refers back to her Jenny from the Block days and is dating Jess. Even though I'm team Jess, nothing can save this movie. It makeup shames, it's, it pushes this whole clean beauty BS, organic BS. As much as I am team Jess, I cannot watch this movie and I do not want you to watch it either. It's bad. Every day. The concept is super creative, where a spirit changes bodies every single day but is in love with this one singular girl, and it's everything that unfolds from that. It's less funny, more romantic, wonderful story regardless. If that's the sort of vibe you're in for, you will really enjoy it. 
Love, Simon. Now, I adored this movie. Um, please go and watch these two videos, James Summerton, Rowan Ellis. It's not really made for the gay community, now is it? Half Magic. Heather Graham, one of my girl crushes since I was a kid. Women finding each other to go on a journey to find love, and then instead find empowerment and get into, like, light witchcraft along the way. I love it. This movie was hilarious, incredibly sex positive. I was not expecting Rosa to be like this. If you've had your heart broken or dated trashy people, go watch Half Magic. You'll th thank me later. I feel pretty. Ah. Straight sized woman finds that she can build her own confidence whilst having N log vibes throughout the entire movie. Oh, and also attacking on men for not being masculine enough. If this had come out in the 2000s, it would be acceptable. I guess if you like Amy Schumer, maybe you'll like this. No. Overboard, a revamp of the 1980s, something that they just keep on trying in Hollywood, hey? A terrible Nepo baby gets amnesia, and a worker who he was incredibly mean to kidnaps him, makes him work for her, and also makes him parent her children? It's a terrible premise all around. Why when you're rebooting a movie from the 80s, would you just redo the same script? They did this with The Hustle, too. No. Book Club. Fantastic cast really heartwarming with weirdly ageist jokes for a movie that's meant to be about empowering older women to get back into the dating scene because that's basically what this is but it's also got Jane Fonda in it and we love Jane Fonda on this channel. Ibiza got a world-class DJ who's pushing the age of 40 and their meet cute is by him pulling our lead protagonist who has terrible work at, by the way and just pulling her out of a crowd to wipe a pee pee that's been drawn on her face. Um, they do have great chemistry, but, uh, yeah, uh, uh you can skip it. <laughs> like Father. This is not a rom-com. It is definitely more of a daddy-daughter, uh, building their relationship back up again thing and breaking down walls. But I really did enjoy the joke about her being old enough to be his partner, given the fact this is played by Kelsey Grammer. Juliet Naked. Do you like You've Got Mail kind of cute comedy? Go watch this movie, you'll really enjoy it. It's complex, well acted, fantastic rom-com. Go and check it out. Napoli Ever After. This is not really a rom-com to me, but it does touch on incredibly important topics. It's more about finding yourself and self-love again. It was too sad of like a pick-me-up rom-com for me personally. Destination Wedding. A movie where two beautiful, amazing people try their hardest to make you hate them. If these were played by anybody else, they would be pitchforks. Basically, it's like being in the mind of Harry from When Harry Met Sally on his worst days, but updated to today. Definitely a dark comedy. And now, we move on to 2019, the last year of normalcy. All about who you know. It's available on Tubi. I couldn't finish this movie. I really did try. The lead protagonist is terrible. Isn't it romantic? A woman goes on a journey to like herself and objectifies men along the way. Meta humour is incredibly meta. Um, they're still struggling when it comes to feminist movies, okay? <laughs> Someone great. Breakups are hard, but the journey is a lot easier if you've got your friends with you and there is enough alcohol in this movie to put everybody in hospital. The Last Summer. Think end of school, but tied with love actually, but actually heartwarming, great chemistry, self-discovery, all that good stuff that you'll be wanting if you're a teenager about to go on to adulthood, TM, you know? It's actually pretty good. Always be my maybe. We both cried. I, I cried even on my second view in watching this. It is not only funny, great chemistry, the entire journey of lovers meeting and then breaking up and then meeting again, everything's really well done, and so very funny. Ellie Wong, Keanu Reeves, do I need to say more? No. Falling in love, spelt in, as in an in that you stay at. Um, if you like Hallmark movies, you'll probably like this. Please don't think that Aotearoa is anything like this because if a property like that existed, it's owned by a terrible miserly land banker. Murder mystery. Adam Sandler is involved in a murder mystery on a boat. There you go, that's your elevator pitch. Uh, you can pick up the rest from there. It's better than I was expecting though. Hi, this is awkward, I forgot to include this one. Plus one. Two messy friends with a whole heap of baggage agree to be each other's date to numerous weddings. And we've seen this plot before. It plays out kind of as you'd expect a whole bunch of personal growth. It's kind of likeable characters, but it's, it's okay. Let's move on to 2020, the year of our wedding and the year that uh, the world started to really crumble and show just how ableist we actually are. The High Note. 
A middle-aged superstar's assistant wants to get into the music industry and finds love along the way. That may sound like nothing, but this movie is actually really good. If you like music, you'll love it. If you like a lot of personal growth, you'll love it. If you like the music industry kind of being shown up for what it is, you'll love it. I really, really did enjoy this. The music's fantastic. The acting's really good. Go check it out. The Wrong Messy, comedic hilarity of Lauren Lapkus and David Spade in a booze-filled rom-com of dating gone wrong. When I say booze-filled, I really mean it. Same as Palm Springs. This is more of a fresh take on Groundhog Day. It's full of humour and existential dread, fantastic chemistry between the two, and um, if you don't like a whole bunch of alcohol and swearing, you won't like this. But if you have a bit of a twisted sense of humour, you'll like this a lot. I definitely did. Really good for a date night movie. The half of it. This is a Netflix movie. It's a slower, more awkward rom-com, and it's a lot more about self-discovery, uh, breaking down preconceived notions, that sort of vibe. Teenage angst in a movie. It's funny, but it's also a little bit sadder and has heartwarming moments, so it's not really the funniest of rom-coms, but if you're in that sort of a vibe, then I think that you'll like this. Love, Wedding, Repeat. Groundhog Day inspires yet another rom-com, but this one's mixed with Four Weddings and a Funeral, but updated, genuinely really hilarious fun time so if you like that sort of a vibe you will like this movie a lot emma you may not consider this to be a rom-com but if clueless is a rom-com this is allowed to be because it's what it's based on this is jane austen's rom-com let's kind of be real about it and this movie ticks all the boxes if you want something that's like set in a period of time you'll love it the lovebirds Finally, we get some representation of people that go beyond just the meet cute. I get sick of seeing everybody just getting together and then that's it, the story's over. So this one instead is about their relationship when it's starting to fall apart. But lo and behold, a whole bunch of crime gets in the way and they have to go and like solve a whole bunch of problems. They have incredible chemistry as actors, beautiful people by the way, and it's this constant banter of back and forth of what long-term relationships are like and it's so brilliantly done. Date night movie for sure, we were in stitches laughing. Go and watch this movie if you haven't already, you're doing yourself a disservice by missing out on it. Broken Hearts Gallery. If your heart hurts, this movie is for you. If you break up and you're incredibly dramatic, uh, this movie is for you. If you love art, this movie is for you. Basically I'm giving you a whole bunch of like a, a vibe about what this movie is, right? Fantastic chemistry and the struggles of being a young adult got everything in this. And sadly we end on an ice girl like you. A cellist discovers her sexuality in a male gaze fashion. That's the entire movie. It's kind of like a raunchy 2000s movie. Some parts work, some parts don't. Some parts are empowering, some parts really aren't. I, I feel like too many men were in the writing room <laughs> when it came to this film. 2021. The map of tiny perfect things. So Groundhog Day comes back around as a theme that just keeps continuing for some reason and in this one it's placed in a fantasy sort of background with this coming of age story. It's actually really sweet, I do quite like this retelling of it, but a lot less funny than like a traditional rom-com, but it's very enjoyable for sure. Resort to Love, essentially Hallmark but with Christina Milian. He's all that. It's trash, like, we know it's trash. Why was this even made? Good on paper. When you meet a man who seems good on paper, but what is he really hiding? It's a funny, clever concept, it's just not like the best, but it's it's definitely here for a laugh. Falling for Figaro. This is not a rom-com, this just makes you depressed. I felt so bad for the characters, you just see pain for the first half of this movie as this girl is trying to fulfill a dream of becoming an opera singer, and it's just torture. I know it's got Joanna Lumley in it, you'd think it'd be great. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of personal growth, but it's a slog to get through. Uh-uh, no. <laughs> we broke up. Chidi from The Good Place is in a very messy on-again, off-again relationship. All of this takes place at his girlfriend's sister's very rushed wedding and it's a very awkward humour. If you really like awkward humour then you might like this, but it's just... It's okay. It's not the best. Again. Queen Bees. A woman who's struggling to come to terms with moving to a retirement village finds friendship and love along the way. Just watch Golden Girls instead. Complete this famous saying. Better late than... Blanche! Pregnant! <laughs>
dating and New York. So imagine if Woody Allen wasn't a terrible person and you combine that with the amazingness that is When Harry Met Sally and you bring it up to the new age like right now with Tinder and you have this amazing movie. Go watch it and then watch it again and watch it again. This is so funny, it's really charming, it's got like fantastic kind of neurotic people in it and amazing sort of shout outs to old movers as well. It's really honest, I count this as a classic, it's fantastic. Go watch it, it's a little bit more tricky to find but well worth it. The right one. A writer gets into a funk and stumbles across this man who changes personality every single day. Uh, this deals with grief in a very interesting way and um, I really wish that there were psychologists kind of on board to help with this movie and that's all I'll say about it. <laughs> Long story short, where a guy who wants to wait until things are perfect to be able to move on with his life and go to the next stages of things, suddenly time just keeps skipping ahead of him and you have this wonderful and hilarious story of personal growth beautiful like romance between them, great chemistry. It's, I love this movie too. This is fantastic. Locked Down. As much as I really like these actors, I did not enjoy this movie all that much. I'm sorry, but I understand the whole wanting to capture the moment in time, but for someone that's basically still living in lockdown because people aren't masking, this was not a fun escape for me. Surely I had in like some fun elements for the last third of it, but otherwise, Mark, Mary, and some other people. If this movie had come out in the 90s, I would have forgiven it for a lot of sins. But this is assessing polyamorous relationships and ah. Uh, I could forgive it if it was done back then, but these days, polyamorous relationships, they're not exactly mainstream, but they're definitely more well known. And it, this is very messy. <laughs> These two people with a lot of baggage that get together and then decide to try an open relationship and don't follow any of the kind of rules of polyamory. I'm friends with people that are polyamorous and they're very happy. Uh, so that's why I'm like, no. <laughs> I, I wish that we could have a really good rom-com about polyamory, but I don't know if people are ready to write that yet. <laughs> 2022. Seems like almost yesterday. Marry me. JLo really does just keep trying, huh? Huge budget, terrible chemistry, big disappointment. That's all you need to know. Skip it. The song's not even that great, people, okay? Purple Hearts, racist, xenophobic propaganda. <laughs> no thank you, sweetheart. And also, nobody wears their hair inside their sweaters like this. Persuasion. Netflix, you lied to me when you said that this would be swoon-worthy. Many people have made videos about this. I particularly like this one. Um, so, no. And no matter how many times you break the fourth wall, it's not gonna make it funny, okay? Jexy. Even Wanda Sykes can't save this movie, and I love Wanda Sykes. A man has sex with his phone, and the humor is basically like that kind of level the whole time. Wedding season. Netflix, you saved yourself with this one. <laughs> Two people get into a fake relationship to get through, you guessed it, the wedding season. But the thing is, this is actually done with great storytelling, really well fleshed out characters, and it's a lot of fun. Plus, the chemistry between the leads was sizzling off the screen. It's a surprisingly good Netflix rom-com, and it's really good to see some actual Indian representation. Thank you. <laughs> I Want You Back. We watched this last night. It's got two slightly unhinged people who get broken up with, and they bump into each other and decide to work together to get their exes back. And you can kind of tell the sort of story that you'll be coming across, but you also can't because the writing is so good, the chemistry is so good, everything is amazing in this. I, I want to watch this again already. And we just watched this last night. It's really good. <laughs> moonshot. Not that moonshot, but this moonshot. A very sanitized version of dystopia where this incredibly hardworking girl decides to fall for the everyman kind of Joe person. Um, yeah, as much as I love her in To All The Boys series, no, this is not all that great. It's not even very witty at all. It's just, it's skippable. The Lost City, previously known as The Lost City of D. Can't imagine why that didn't get through censorship. Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum, I'm sorry, have no chemistry. If you want to see Sandra Bullock be a badass, just go watch The Proposal instead and you basically have this movie anyway, okay? Plus she has great chemistry with Ryan Reynolds in that, but I don't think any actors don't have great chemistry with Ryan Reynolds. Father of the Bride, another reboot. This isn't actually that fun to watch. This is about intense family struggles and the literal patriarch of the family having all sorts of like emotional strife. Not a fun watch, don't recommend it. Crush. 
It's humor dates it already and it's just come out as in 2022. But at the same time, it's a really summery cute watch and King Pun, yes I am saying that correctly, the doodles that they do, fantastic. And the graffiti, that's really good. And it's actually really nice to have LGBTQ representation that's not just the coming out story. It's really cute, nice and summery if you want that sort of vibe. Very idyllic view. <laughs> Oh, and the straight people are the worst part of that movie. You'll understand if you've seen it. Fire Island. Pride and Prejudice, but make it gay and today? Yes, please. This was so fun. This is... I don't understand actually why it got so much hate, because this was genuinely a really fun watch. Cha-cha, real smooth. Um, as fun as that title sounds, this is a much heavier rom-com than you may think, but I do really appreciate the fact that when they cast this actual autistic actress, they consulted with her and actually shaped the role around her, and that's... It's fantastically done in that way. But our protagonist, the bar mitzvah entertainer, yes, you heard that right, he also works at Meat Sticks. Uh, he gets involved with her older sister and um, it's very complicated and quite challenging. Also, trigger warning for miscarriage in that movie, okay? Just so you know. Hey, at least they handled autism so much better than Sia, right? <laughs> Along for the Ride is another Netflix movie, which is a beautiful kind of coming of age story for this adultified child who I think a lot of people will be able to relate to. They have this really sweet relationship. Um, it does deal with like family struggles, family dramas, but if you're in the mood for a nice coming of age movie, you'll probably like this, even though some of the writing isn't the best. Mr. Malcolm's List. Um, someone was really inspired by Bridgerton. So this is a colorblind kind of Jane Austen-esque movie about this very rich man who has very high expectations for who they want to have as their bride. They don't really find dancing all that fun. Are you seeing the similarities here? I feel like the budget's just a little bit smaller, which I could forgive if they had chemistry, but um, I'm sorry, the chemistry is not there. So stick to Bridgerton. The Royal Treatment. Um, I actually completely forgot about this movie as soon as I watched it, so you don't need to worry about it. The Valet. Notting Hill but make it in LA, and you basically have this movie, but they really do embrace Mexican culture and language throughout the movie, so that's really cool. But when it comes to the chemistry between the leads again, it wasn't really great. My need for chemistry is like I need to be in a lab at the moment. <laughs> Rosaline, which is basically the vibes of Bridgerton but bring it to the 2000s with very inaccurate costumes. It's actually a pretty fun watch to be honest with you, but it's nothing groundbreaking. I really feel like they could have gone a lot further with this. This is Rosalind's take on Romeo and Juliet. Sex Appeal. Get it? The, the whole premise is in the title because it's an app and it's appeal. This is a sex comedy for teens from this girl that really excels in STEM but doesn't know how to have like relationships and do the thing and her mum's plural, three of them, uh, try and help her along the way and she builds an app to make sure that everyone's able to have good sex and uh, yeah it's a bit like American Pie but without the misogyny. I don't know how else to say it but if you're not comfortable with everything being about sex, especially in a Spock voice, you're not gonna like this. It sounds more and more absurd the more I talk about that one. Sam and Leanne on a downer, a perfect pairing. <sighs> Very tired tropes. Rich woman goes to try and work with the vineyard to be able to get an exclusive deal and... <sighs> it's so boring. <laughs> so, is the rom-com renaissance here? Personally, I think so. There have been so many that have come out. I didn't even realize when I took on this challenge last year how many movers I'd have to sit through. <laughs> Some of them were really good. Some of them were terrible though. So, and there's some which haven't even made it on this list. One, I either didn't want to watch them, or two, I couldn't find them because I tried really, really hard to find them all. And there's more coming out very soon. Do you think that I'm over rom-coms? No, definitely not. I'm very glad that we're here in the rom-com renaissance because I think that it's really good to sort of update the genre. I don't like how feminine things keep on being pushed down and pushed to the side as not being good because you can get really fantastic writing. You can get these amazing epiphanies that people have, but it's still fun, okay? Same as with Sullivan's Travels, the importance of having fun when people are dealing with bad stuff is very important, okay? If you haven't seen Sullivan's Travels, I'll recommend that. I've got it on DVD downstairs because I don't think you can stream it from anywhere. <laughs> In my personal opinion, these are the best ones. The cream of the crop, the ones which I think will go into classic territory, and I want them to go into classic territory. So if out of all of this, you don't recognize any of the other ones that I've talked about, 
these are the ones that you should go and see that you should stream sometimes i had to go to unusual websites to be able to stream some of these but it's okay it's okay all of these are really good i stand behind all of them and that's saying a lot considering i watched this many movies because i haven't counted it yet for some reason i maths isn't a strong suit for me okay <laughs> Have you seen any of these movies? Sometimes the best ones are really hard to find on streaming and I think that's a real kicker because I was getting like kind of, I was getting a bit sad just seeing all of the bad ones and then I realized it's because some of the great ones that have been released aren't available on many streaming services and I wish it was the other way around. It was surprising how many good ones Netflix came out with themselves, which I really wasn't expecting. I think that we can kind of have this nostalgic view of classic rom-coms, but like I said, they've got a lot of problems in them as well. So I do think it's important to keep this updated to keep evolving the genre because I, I still think that there is so much more to be done because most of these are cis, het, white, you know, heteronormative and of course very able-bodied. Like I said, I want more LGBTQ representation, I want polyamory representation, I want disabled representation, I want stories which are not just based around trying to shove their stories into a straight story, I want more stories because I don't want all of these revamps which have been done because for some reason they kept on digging up the 1980s again like that happened a lot in 2018 and 2019 when it came to movies we don't need to do that we can do updated stories like dating in New York why can't we do more like that so anyway Without the nostalgia goggles and looking at things objectively, we do have some fantastic choices. So hopefully I've made your miserable month, which is February for a lot of people, more enjoyable. Um, you've got some date night movie ideas now, or just some movies to watch by yourself. I've hopefully given you a vibe for what you may want. Um, but yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed this because this will have taken me the longest time to do. Like I said, this has been a year long project, so don't forget to give this a thumbs up, comment down below and also subscribe. And I will see you again next time. I don't think next week because we've got a wedding on. Take care lovelies, bye! Didn't feel like a rom-com to me. It hit on some really important things. Oh my god, oh my god. Welcome to living in Auckland when there's flooding. Ah. My anxiety has just gone way up.